accusation. Uh, I marvel that you have so soon removed yourself from the one that called you. And then later in chapter 5, he'll say, if you, if you continue down this avenue, if you leave the cross and you go back to works uh, under the law, then Christ can't profit you. He can't affect you. But listen, if we'll accept the rebuke, Take the correction, receive the correction if we're out of the way, if our faith is in any other thing than the cross, and then a greater revelation will be ministered to us by the Lord. But first it requires a rebuke, then it requires a true repentance, which is an admittance, God, I've been wrong, I've believed wrong, I've went wrong, and today I come back to the Word of God as it is in truth relating to Jesus, as it is in righteousness, as it relates to Christ and Him crucified, the only avenue by which righteousness comes. And we'll look at that more today. Listen, I was going the wrong way and God had to rebuke me. And I praise Him that He did. But I had to accept the rebuke. I had to repent, turn from that way, relinquish all that I had taught and believed even though it would make me look foolish to many and begin to go the right way. And I have no doubt about it that when this letter was received by the church in Galatia, there was some who would say, who's going to believe that? Who needs to hear that? I don't need to be rebuked by somebody writing me a letter who's not even here. And I don't, yeah, I don't need that. And people would actually leave the faith and go back under the law and then they could not receive the greater revelation that the Lord wanted to give. And that's what he wants to do every time he brings a rebuke correction. It's because he doesn't just want to bring us back to the path, but when we come back to the path, we, he, begins, he begins to to excel and increase the revelation of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, where we understand the Word of God in a more clear way. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.18 that the path of the just, not the path of the unjust, the path of the just shines more unto that perfect day, praise God. That means if we'll stay on the path of the just, which is faith in what justified us, God will continually illuminate in our hearts His Son, Jesus Christ and he will be formed in us and we will be able to minister as New Testament ministers that we've been called to be. Amen? Praise God. So Paul is here saying, and the Judaizers were saying, that after the law came along, it took, it took over and changed the way of righteousness. They, I believe that's what they were saying. Yes, the promise was made to Abraham, but then God gave the law, and there's a new avenue for righteousness. And that's not what happened at all. And we'll see this here today. This was their problem. They thought they were righteous because of the law. Nobody's righteous because of the law. You can't be made righteous because of the law. Praise God. I'm glad I know that today. And when the Bible talks about the law in their day, it was talking about circumcision or keeping the, the laws of Moses, the rituals, the ceremonies, the rites, and all those things. But today, the, the law could simply be me thinking I've got to do something, anything, to find deliverance. Or I've got to do something to get saved. Or I've got to do something to experience this great salvation of the Lord. And yes, there's Bible study, baptism, water baptism, there's church, there's praying and fasting and tithes and offering, giving. Those are things we do because we're walking by faith in the sacrifice, not to bring about faith. Faith comes by hearing, not by doing. Glory to God. I'm glad we know that today. And we'll see some things. In all reality, there's always been some sort of law, and even today there remains law. But, but because the priesthood changed, the law also changed. And I might have mentioned this last week. The Aaron, I'm a, three weeks ago, rather. The Aaronic priesthood went away because the new everlasting great high priest showed up, Jesus Christ, who shed his own blood, not the blood of animals for us, becoming our great high priest. And the Bible says in Hebrews 7, 11, and 12, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, because under it the people received the law. What further need was there for another priest that should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Because the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Amen. 
We need to understand when Jesus came and he became our great high priest through the shedding of his own blood and is presenting himself before God in heaven as our great high priest now seated at the right hand of the Father, the old priesthood was done away with, therefore that law was done away with, glory to God. It's, it's, still, it's still here today, but for moral purposes. Nobody's ever been saved by the law. Nobody's ever been made righteous by the law. It wasn't given for that. And if you think about about it, the law was given in an inferior way than the new law, which is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 2. Listen, the law was given by angels through a mediator named Moses. The new law was given by God. The new covenant was made by God to his son only between God, hallelujah, the father and the son without earthly, fleshly men involved. Praise God. Hallelujah. That there's a new covenant, there's a new law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's the law God deals with men concerning now. Those that will come to faith in Christ are under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And they are delivered, made free from the law of sin and death. The old covenant law is a ministry of sin, condemnation, and death. And we're no longer under that because Christ fulfilled that law for us. That ought to make you shout, hallelujah. Christ fulfilled that law for us. Glory to God. And anybody that's trying to live under the law of doing is only can produce fleshly works. And it's an irritation. It's really a blasphemous statement to God that Christ really didn't finish what I needed at Calvary. I've also got to. You can't play a part in your salvation other than just believing in Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews 1 and 3 that Jesus by himself purged us from our sins. Glory to God. He couldn't accept our help because we were nothing but sinful and we can't help. He did it all by himself. And to consider ourselves as having to do something to make it complete other than having true faith, which will produce works. Can I get a witness? True faith produces works, but works can't save. Works are there because you are already saved. And anybody teaching that you have to do something to make your salvation complete, you better run from them because they are not enabled of the Spirit to be the New Testament minister they claim to be. Amen. Matthew 5 and 20, Jesus says this, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I'm speaking about this this morning because this is what's on trial here. The Judaizers were trying to pull the Galatians back under law. Yes, Christ, but you've got to keep the law, my friend. You, listen, you're not really saved unless you're circumcised and keeping the law. They wanted to keep this thing on a national level, but God ripped the veil and said it's no longer on a national level. It's now whosoever will. It ain't about a nation over in Jerusalem, hallelujah. It's about God coming coming for all Jew and Gentile, praise be to God, ripped the veil from top to bottom, said that way is over, now I've made a new and living way for you in the veil of the flesh of my son through his death on the cross. Glory to God, and if you'll just accept that by faith, you not only can be saved, you can live saved. But these Galatians were already saved, already filled with the Holy Spirit, already had seen miracles by the Spirit. But here comes the Judaizers. Here they come running. Oh, but that ain't it. you got to keep the law. And there's men and preachers today in many, many, almost all churches to be uh, real with you today that would try to bring you back under law. I used to be one of those preachers. I'm not anymore. Praise God. That's a miracle in and of itself. And, uh, but anything you telling somebody they got to do, you're not walking as a New Testament minister. Because the New Testament, and we'll see it, the New Testament that God has enabled us as ministers to minister, to serve the people, it's two things and two things only. It's a ministry of the Spirit and a ministry of righteousness. Think about that. And just again to remind you that God says in his word in Proverbs 8 and 8 that all his words are in righteousness. Think about that. This is going to be mind-blowing if you've never heard this before. God says every word he's ever spoken is in righteousness. 
Are you ready for this? And righteousness is only revealed in the gospel. Mm, that'll make you have a paused moment. All the words that God has ever spoken is in righteousness. And the righteousness of God is only revealed and offered to man through the gospel. Romans 1, 16 and 17. It's in your Bible. Proverbs 8 and 8. And so for our status to be declared as righteous, we have to believe the gospel, which is Christ and Him crucified. To offer the fruits daily of righteousness to God, to bear the fruits of righteousness, to walk in the path of righteousness, it's, it only happens through faith in the cross, which is the gospel. Outside of that, there can be no status of righteous in Christ, no status as a servant of righteousness. And no fruits to be bare of righteousness outside of Christ and Him crucified and that alone being the object of our faith. And somebody said, glory to God, amen. God made it simple for us. If we'll just study the Word, He will reveal to us that we are New Testament enabled ministers, hallelujah, and that we can, by the Spirit, minister the New Testament, which is the righteousness of God, praise the Lord. See, it's two things. It's a ministry of the Spirit and of righteousness. Righteousness is only revealed in the gospel. So all who use God's Word outside of the context of the gospel are not ministering new covenant promises. They may talk about the promises, but they offer them in a works mentality. Because righteousness speaks of Christ and what He's done, who He is for us, not what we must do. Glory to God. And if your righteousness <clears throat> does not exceed that of the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the scribes, which thinks they got to work for it, then you ain't going to make heaven. And that's what Jesus taught. Again, that's Matthew 5, 20. The righteousness that exceeds that of the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Pharisees is that righteousness afforded to us through the cross. Jesus Christ dying for us, Him taking our sin and giving us His righteousness through that avenue alone, not plus works. Hallelujah. That's the whole purpose of this letter. Amen. Unless our righteousness comes through the cross of Christ, there will be no entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Can I get you to turn in your Bibles today to Galatians 2 and 21? We'll back up a chapter where we were uh, because... All of this letter flows together so much and sometimes you just have to look back at what the Holy Spirit has already said to get a deeper meaning of what He's saying now. And I'm sure they did that as they read this letter as the pastor would read the letter and he'd be over here around the area that we're reading now and, and, and they'd say, somebody would ask a question, hey, could you back up and read that other paragraph again? This is making sense, but... but you need to read that other paragraph of that letter again. And, and he, I think that will help us understand. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what the whole Word of God's given to us for. So that we could have the revelation of God in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said the Scriptures are about Him. Amen? Glory to God. So, and for Jesus to say in John 5, 39, you search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have life, but they are they which testify of me. Jesus being the righteousness of God confirms what God said far a long time ago in Proverbs 8 and 8, that all the words I speak are in righteousness. That means they're through faith and they're through the cross of Christ. For there alone has God always stood, God always ministered. Hallelujah. Always. He started before the foundation of the world with the Lamb slain. He's operated through uh, these ages of man. Through that viewpoint, God is ever mindful of His covenant. He deals with the whole world based on this covenant. That's why Paul the Apostle wrote that all will be judged according to His gospel. Because that's how God will judge everybody, whether they received His Word in righteousness through faith in the gospel or whether they rejected it. Oh, they might have received the Word of God, but they might have held it their entire lives in an unrighteous manner outside of faith in the cross of Christ alone. I don't want to be there. I do not want to be there. I've been there. I'm not going back. Hallelujah. We march on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Galatians 2.21 says, I do not frustrate 
the grace of God. Let's stop right there and talk about that. Paul is here saying, I do not put aside. When you look up the word frustrate, it does not mean what we use that word for, that we're just frustrated and, you know, you're frustrating me and I'm frustrating you and we're agitated. No, the word frustrate means to put it aside. It means actually to deny the grace of God. And the grace of God is God at work. God desiring to do something in me, for me, through me that I cannot do myself and I do not deserve to have done. For me, or in me, or through me, praise God. God's grace is God at work. So let's read it this way. I do not put aside, I do not deny God's desire to work in me. God's desire to work in me, through me. Here, watch this now, because if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now I want to ask you this morning to take a close look at this scripture and, and just tell me what you think the highlight of this one verse is. Is, is, the, is the main object here, the focus, is it grace, is it, is it law? No, it's not. It's the avenue by which righteousness comes. Think about this now. The topic in this one verse, the Holy Spirit is attempting to get us to see what is the avenue by which righteousness comes. And if we do not understand that righteousness does not come by our working, but by the death of Jesus, then we will be found working, but it will not be God working, it will not be grace. Remember, Romans 5.21, write it down, make a note. Grace reigns through righteousness. Grace does not save except through righteousness. Grace does not reign except through righteousness. Grace does not function. God does not work except through righteousness. That's good stuff. My Lord, we needed this a long time ago. Man, the church needs to come back to these simple yet powerful truths that allow the Holy Spirit to come and to intervene and to move and have His way, work miracles, bring healing, deliverance, and all that Jesus died for us to be experiencing today. It's the avenue by which righteousness comes. Think about it. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I will not put aside, reject, deny what God is trying to do because if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And Paul here is saying righteousness does not come through the law. It comes through the death of Jesus. And if I'll accept the avenue by which righteousness comes, grace can reign in my life. That means God can save, God can work, God can sanctify, God can heal, deliver. He can use me as an enabled minister of the New Testament. But outside of that, outside of true faith and grace, outside of the avenue by which righteousness comes, God cannot function in through my life. And every minister that refuses to preach the cross, preach the gospel, relate God's word, hold God's word, believe God's word, preach and teach God's word in the avenue in which it is spoken in righteousness that's only revealed in the gospel, God can't function there. And I'm not going to add, say, there's very little God can do because Galatians teaches that when we move into that place outside the avenue by which righteousness comes, Christ cannot affect us, He cannot profit us, but not because He's left or forsaken us, but because we've removed ourselves from the path He leads in. He leads, Psalms 23.3, in the path of righteousness righteousness. All His words are spoken in righteousness. When we have our faith in the Word of God as it is in righteousness, then faith can come. And it won't be flesh coming, it will be faith coming. And when faith comes, praise God, faith will overcome. That's where we've missed it. We, we've been preaching law for too long. 
And, and, and the devil, he understands what's going on in these last days, so he's raised up a false grace movement. The, the Joseph Prince and all that garbage out there that says you don't need to repent. Well, listen, if you don't need to repent, if, if there wasn't need to, for repentance, then there's a lot in the New Testament we could rip out. But what they have to do, they have to alter God's Word. I won't alter God's Word. I'll just believe it as He has given it to us in righteousness. Praise God. This is good stuff. This is exciting stuff. This is the gospel being ministered to you today. Think about that. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. That means the gospel puts God's word in its proper context. Outside of the gospel, we've been confused and, and the Holy Spirit wouldn't work. So bless God, we had to start working and call it a move of the Spirit. That's huge in the body today. And I understand we want a move of God. We want to be revived. We want to be stirred. We want to be used. But if we don't watch it and we don't know what I'm teaching today, if we don't understand this, we will just have all these flesh pots, all these fleshly carnal moves, and we will call it a move of the Spirit. And it is not a move of the Spirit. If it is not truth moving you, it is not God. If it is not faith in the gospel moving you, it ain't God moving you. It's just our old stinking flesh that likes to glory in and about itself. Somebody said amen. The focus here, I've already said it, but I'll read it again. The focus here is the avenue in which righteousness comes. Amen. Think about this. The moment you placed faith in Christ and what He did for you at Calvary, God declared you as obedient. He declared you as righteous in Christ Jesus. He declared you as a servant of righteousness. I'm speaking from Romans chapter 6. Amen, verses 17 and 18. You didn't work for that. You believed for that. God honored your faith and declared you righteous Declared you a servant of righteousness. Declared you justified and an obedient child of God. Not when you went and performed an act of obedience. When you believed in the obedience of Christ unto death for you on the cross. God saw your faith in the obedient one and saw you in him. Hallelujah. Just as obedient as Christ. Glory to God. That will make you shout and run around the building three or four times. Your faith in the obedient one got you his obedience. And it wasn't because you worked for it. The law can't give it to you. The law can just condemn you because you can't obey it. And that's not just the law of Moses, that's anything. But listen to me. Here's where the church has missed it. We've pretty much got a little bit of what I said about that over the last 500 years of beginning with Martin Luther's Reformation about being saved by faith, justified by faith in the cross alone. But now about 20 years ago, the Holy Spirit is bringing the truth of that we're sanctified daily daily living in victory through faith in the cross. Not what we've got to do. There are many works, but they're all in Christ. And we've tried to work for it. We've tried to earn it. We've tried to preach what you've got to do to get deliverance instead of what you've got to believe to get deliverance. Hallelujah. You want the power of God in your life? Quit listening to Uncle Joe and that lying preacher you've been listening to and just come back to the one who saved you by simple faith. Hallelujah. Just come back to faith in the cross. Come back to the only avenue by which righteousness comes. Not just the status of righteousness upon you being saved, but the possibility of you bearing the fruit of righteousness. This is powerful. You must keep your faith in the gospel, the place where righteousness is revealed. And it's only through the death of Christ. Amen. If you keep your faith there and you're not moved away by what preachers say or the books they write today that move you from program to program, from wind of doctrine to wind of doctrine, and you just stand your ground, clinging to the cross, determined not to listen to know anything else, and hearing the word of the Lord today. Watch this, Galatians 6.14, Paul wrote this under the unction of the Holy Spirit and says, God forbid... Not I forbid, but God forbid that we glory in anything other than the cross of Christ. Did you hear that? God forbids that we glory in anything we do. God forbids that. 
That's not just something Paul said. That's the word of the Lord. It's in your Bible. It's the Word of God. Oh, it's not just the Word of Paul. So there's a lot of people in the church that would say, well, Paul wrote that, and you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't care what they say. I'm not following them. I'm following the Bible as it is the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. God used men. He moved upon men by His Spirit, Old and New Testament, to give us what we have in what we call our Bible. And if you don't listen to all the excuses, as to why Paul might have got some of it wrong. and what, Paul didn't get any of it wrong. Paul had to learn just like we're learned, but he finally got the revelation by the Spirit. He says, by the revelation of Jesus. So you need to understand that. Only through your faith in the cross can God save you. Can God continue to work in your life? That's the importance of the letter written to the Galatians and to us. I don't care who they are. And it's, listen, it's amazingly subtle to be deceived and to step into deception because someone's being nice to you. Someone paying your light bill. Someone's buying your groceries in your hard time, your time of struggle. And listen, just because somebody's being nice to you doesn't mean they're offering you the truth. Don't give them the power. Think about this now. God forbids that you glory in anything other than the work of Christ and the cross. Oh, we preachers need to get a hold of that today. I said we preachers need to get a hold of that today. God forbid that we glory in our denominations. God forbid that we glory in our positions. God forbid that we glory in anything we're doing, but that we only glory in Christ and the cross. If we just grab a hold of that, if we just begin to look back at what really took place at the cross and really believe that was the only answer God has for all humanity today, for salvation, sanctification, and all provision, then He would begin to open up the revelation of His Word. But as long as we are holding to something that we believe is working, although God says it is not working, I only work by grace and I will not function outside of the avenue by which righteousness comes. Grace reigns through righteousness. Hallelujah. That's good stuff, man. You ought to be jumping this morning. You ought, listen, you ought to be sharing this on your media. Don't just like this message today. Put this teaching out there in somebody's face. Put this out there. They may not click on it. They may not listen to it. But you did your part. You offered them the teaching of God's Word as it is truth and in righteousness. And maybe, just maybe, the Holy Spirit would be able to reach into somebody's heart and redirect them. Bring about that refreshing of repentance in their lives and get them back on track glory to God hallelujah I'm stirred up this morning because this is strong in my heart this teaching that we're doing on Galatians that well, listen once you understand the avenue by which righteousness comes whether it's for initial salvation initial status of righteousness or your daily being led by the spirit in the path of righteousness bearing the fruits of righteousness only comes through faith in the death of Jesus. Galatians 2.21 is powerful. I do not frustrate the grace of God, because if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That is a powerful statement. Y'all understand that? That's a powerful statement. That means nothing you do outside of faith in the cross will usher in righteousness. And if righteousness is not being ushered in, grace can't function. That means God can't function. Because listen, when we talk about grace, we're talking about the spirit of grace. We're talking about God saving, God teaching, God sanctifying, God bringing the provision. Amen. That's what we're talking. We're not talking about just some word grace and poof, God will give you some grace. No, the Bible plainly teaches that if our faith is not in the avenue by which righteousness comes, grace is frustrated. That means it's put aside. Even in our ignorance, in our subtle deception, where we think we're right but we're wrong, deception is I don't know that I don't know. I've been there. I understand what it's like to be there, to wake up one day and to realize you've directed hundreds, if not thousands, down the wrong path. It wasn't the path of righteousness. It was the path of law. And only death can be experienced under the law. It's a ministry of condemnation and death. 
That means anything you do outside of faith in the cross is you trying to work for your salvation, work for your sanctification, work, work, work. And Jesus said, it is finished. Glory to God. That's good stuff. Romans 5.21, let me read it to you since I mentioned it. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness. Grace only reigns through righteousness. You want grace to reign in your life? You want God to be able to not be grieved but work in you and through you? Then come back to faith in the cross. Let that government of 12 stuff go back where it came from. Let that purpose driven go back where it came from. Let that word of faith, false doctrine, you confess it. The words of your mouth or the... Let let all that stuff go back where it came from. You get off that wagon of false doctrine and come back to the place where you only cling to the cross. You only are determined to know nothing else but Christ and Him crucified. You glory only in the finished work of Christ. And you watch what your God will do for you. That's where the working of the Spirit takes place. That's where the working of miracles and all the movement of God takes place in the avenue of righteousness as grace will reign only there. Think about that. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Think about that. What about Paul telling Timothy, lay hold on eternal life? Something we already have as Christians. We're not waiting for eternal life. We are waiting for the redemption of our bodies to be made new. But listen, you already have eternal life. His name is Jesus. He dwells in you by His Spirit. He's our hope of glory. He is our life. He declared that I am the life. Amen. So when Paul told Timothy to lay hold on eternal life, he's just reminding him, stay tied to Calvary. Because only there can you experience this eternal life in this avenue of righteousness can grace reign. I need grace reigning in my life. What's that mean? I need God functioning in me. I need Him performing that work that He began, that He promised He would finish. But I can cut Him off. God will not just keep working because I keep quoting that Scripture. Galatians proves that. He won't leave me. He won't forsake me. But He can be grieved until He comes for me. Let me say that again. He won't leave me. He won't forsake me. But He can be grieved until He comes for me. I do not want that. I want to bear the fruit of His righteousness. I want to bear the fruit of the Spirit. I want to have rewards when I get to heaven that there will be more glory to my Lord. Not rewards that are all about me and look what Curtis did, but rewards that are for me because Christ was able to use me as a New Testament able minister, praise God. Listen, heaven ain't about us getting up there and being something. Heaven and even all the gifts and all the rewards are all about what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're not trying to lay up treasures in heaven so somebody will think we're all that. All of our rewards and treasures in heaven are going to be pointing to the one who is our reward, who is our exceeding great reward, who is our treasure, praise God. Hallelujah. There's not going to be denominations in heaven. And if you're praying God's will be done on earth as as it is in heaven, you ought to think about that. I'm not one of those that come out of all that to go back in it. I come out to stay out. And they don't want to have anything to do with me. Now they'll have something to do with other uh, ministers so they can try to get a platform to preach. But they don't mess with me. Not because I'm mean and ugly, but because I preach the truth. They're not preaching. They're preaching their their stuff. I'm preaching His stuff. Glory to God. Amen. This is what we need today. Not because I'm giving it, but because it's the Word of God. And I want to just take a second to say how much I appreciate 
All of you who do listen, all of you who do follow this teaching, this gospel, this message. In the Philippines, I preached the same message everywhere I went this year. Every time I taught and preached, I taught the same message. Every time I did. And listen, I heard some profound, awesome teaching, but God just had me preach and teach the same message everywhere I went this time. He does that sometimes. It was a different group of people every time we preached, and so God just used me to show what I'm telling you today is what God used me to offer. He offered this to the people in the Philippines. And all who will come back to this way of righteousness, God will explode in their hearts. God will do great and mighty things. But all who reject it, whatever they're a part of, is even going to get worse and worse. Amen. This is what God is saying. This is what God has always said. This is the direction God has always pointed. It is not a new thing. It's new to us, but it's not new to God. He, Before He created the world, He laid the chief cornerstone in the blood of the Lamb, His own Son. And then God spoke only through that concerning to all that He would ever say to whoever would hear. All his words are in righteousness. Oh, that, that's got you, don't it? That's got some of you scratching your head. Well, listen, when you get through scratching, you, need, you just need to say, praise God. Amen. Don't wonder about God's word. God's word means what he says. The reason we hear these things and we get confused is because our hearts are full of false doctrine. Full of false doctrine. That has come to us through parents maybe that loved us. Pre preachers that we were in relationship that loved us. And listen, just because somebody loves you doesn't mean they're telling you what's right. Amen, Brother Curtis, or oh me. Verse 18 says, Because if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Here Paul is just with his hammer, he's beating this truth. He, he's sharing this, this merciful revelation of Christ that it's not by works. The Judaizers, they're lying to you. And we say the same thing today. The preachers that are preaching outside of this avenue of righteousness, outside of the avenue of the gospel, I'm talking about, can I say it this morning, ever message ever message, if it's not in the avenue that righteousness comes, which is the gospel, it's outside of what God is able to work in. All God's works are done in truth. The truth is the gospel. Because if we know the truth, Jesus said, we'd be made free. What did we hear that made us free? The gospel. God's truth and God's gospel are tied. You can't separate them. And only through the avenue by which the word of the truth of the gospel and faith in that alone will God be found doing what God does. Outside of that, there will be a resistance of God. A resistance. Us trying and trying, but it will not work because grace will not flow. I'm glad I know that today. Paul tells the Galatians it was given by promise. The law did not annul that. The law did not do away with that. I'm thankful I know that today. And uh, verse 19 says, Wherefore then serveth the law? What you serving the law for, Paul says? It was added because of transgression, transgressions. Now, make a note of that because people ask all the time, why did God give the law? Well, it t explains it right here in your Bible. Because of transgressions, because of sin. Until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Talking about the law was given because of sin, because of transgressions, until the promise of the seed, until Christ, the Redeemer, the Messiah, would come... Amen. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Here Paul is mentioning again what I mentioned earlier, that the law was an inferior covenant. It was given through angels and Moses. The new covenant was cut on the cross by God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, without the help of fleshly men. Without sinful humanity, God the Father and God the Son cut a covenant that we couldn't be a part of because we can't keep covenant. But He can't fail, hallelujah. He cut covenant, He kept covenant. 
covenant. And today he's offered you an opportunity to be an enabled minister of this new covenant. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 9. Read it and shout for joy. Hallelujah. But remember, it's only a ministry of the Spirit and a ministry of righteousness. Outside of that... God ain't working in it. That means the Spirit will only minister the, op- the avenue by which righteousness comes that grace might reign. Amen. This is absolutely phenomenal teaching today that God is reaching for you. Whoever you are, whatever day this is, wherever you are, God is reaching for you to bring you back to that stable place. Stable. It's the rock. There's stability on the rock. Our works take us off the rock. Amen. We, we begin to build on things other than the rock, which is Christ and Him crucified. And when the winds blow and the storms come and the winds blow, we get blowed around, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of the cross, our faith there alone holds us steady on the rock and the winds may come, the rains may come, and the winds are going to blow, they're going to come. But you will not be blowed off the rock. Hallelujah. If you will just say, God forbid, I preach, I teach, I believe, I share anything in God's Word outside of the Gospel. For it all points to the Gospel. It all will have to flow through the Gospel for the right revelation to come. Or it won't be a revelation that the Holy Spirit gives. Remember, the New Testament ministry is a, te- is a ministry of the Spirit and of righteousness. means He will not minister to you, through you, outside of the gospel. The gospel is for the saved people as well as the lost. It has a different purpose for us as it has the lost. It will save the lost, but it will give us the power to live the saved life and to be a minister of the covenant that has saved us. Praise God. This is good stuff. I'm, I'm excited this morning. If you can't tell it, glory. I'm excited just that God would choose people like us to love and to save. And not only that, but to use See, our God, is He doesn't just speak. He's not a big bag of air. God loved us so much, he, He's shown us all through the Old Covenant that He's loved us with the promise of a coming Messiah, a coming Redeemer, a coming Savior. And God didn't just tell us He loved us. He showed us He loved us. He, he spoke it to us. Then he, then he showed it to us all through the Old Covenant. Then He fulfilled it in His Son at the cross. And the cross of Christ was the manifestation of God's love. But God said, you know what? I'll take it further than that. If you'll believe in what I did to offer you my love, offer you salvation, I will take my love, which is who I am, and I myself will move inside of you. Your body will become the habitation of who I am by my spirit, and I will shed my love abroad in your heart. I got news for you. If God's doing something, it's just going to get better. It's going to be on the increase. It's going to be more and more and more, but it's got to be in the path of righteousness. That's the only place He will function. And that's only found through faith today in the gospel. That's why Jesus taught a daily cross. And a denial of self that wants to believe in I've got to do this. A denial of self when Uncle Joe comes and says, Yes, 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 but the Bible says you have to be water baptized to be saved. We'll say, No, no, no. The, the Bible says all I have to do is believe in Christ. And when I do, I'm baptized into His death by the Spirit. Romans 6, 3. And yes, I will go and be baptized as a statement of testimony and an obedient act that I'm already saved. Because that is righteousness Jesus dying for me not a work of baptism Titus 3 5 says we're not saved by any works of righteousness glory to God can you tell I'm excited today I'm excited to be sharing this wonderful truth this this great it it, listen people say you're just preaching it too narrow listen it is narrow Jesus said there's not many people going to accept this. I I believe that not many people would repent when they read this letter written to them. But I also believe there was a remnant that said, Oh God, forgive me. 
Lord, I've been listening to those people again that you saved me. Lord, you been, the Judaizers been trying to pull me back under that. I got to do, I got to do, I got to do. Lord, forgive me for putting that as the object of my faith. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to true faith, the avenue by which righteousness is found and grace reigns. Glory to God. How I'm coming back. You can come back today. Yes, people are going to talk bad about you. Yes, people are going to uh, push you out. They're going to get rid of you. They're going to kick you out of their, their whatever. But you know what? You're going to be walking with God. And it's a whole lot better to be walking and trusting in God than walking and trusting in man. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a whole lot better. The Lord through the Apostle Paul would ask, Why are you serving the law? As it was added, because of transgressions until, until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Hmm. The law cannot save, and it was not given to Abraham, but to Moses. Law wasn't given to the one the promise was given to. Think about that. Think about that. The law, the law was given to Moses. The promise to Abraham. Think about that. And when God gave the promise, nothing could remove that promise. 432 or some, something like that years later, the law come. You know what? That didn't abolish what God promised, not only to, but through Abraham. We need to get that. That's what the Judaizers would probably say. Oh, well, God promised that to Abraham. No, God promised that to and through Abraham to his seed, which is Christ. And as we'll read later on in this third chapter, can't wait to get there, said if you're a believer in Christ, then you're that seed. Why? Because you're in Christ, hallelujah. It's good stuff. One last thing, I'll close today speaking on what we're talking about right now. That if you go back to the law, and it's not just the Ten Commandments, but anything you're being told you have to do, even any of the biblical principles such as prayer, water baptism, communion, that we are to function in, we are to do, but they're only because those works are in Christ where we've been placed when we were born again. Not to do, to be placed in Christ. Notice that Ephesians 2.10 tells us those works are found, they're located in Christ. You don't do them to get in Christ, you believe to get in Christ, and then that's where the works are located. Amen? That's good. The, the works are not located outside of Christ to get in Christ. They're in Christ, a place you can't be until you believe. So he's saying, what are you, do, what are you going back to the law for? Why are you going back to the law? It's a ministry of... It was only given because of sin. And watch this, 1 Corinthians 15, 56. Make a note, highlight it in your Bible. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. You want to see sin strengthened in your life? Go back to the law. Romans chapter 7 verse 5 tells us that it's the law that puts sin in motion. That's what we're seeing here. That's what Paul's telling us. The law was given because of transgression. What did it do when it came? It strengthened sin. But it also revealed to us, I can't be nothing but a sinner. I'm a faith. I've got to have that promised Redeemer. I've got to have that Savior. And that's what this chapter later on will show us that the law was given only as a schoolmaster is to point us to the one that we need because we can't save ourselves. The law can't do it. We still need. And that ought to be proof to us right there. Well, you know you can't keep the law. The law of anything. You've made promises to God in yourself. You've never kept any of them faithfully. We've all done that. We've all failed. But Jesus came and he did not fail. He fulfilled the law completely shed his blood for you and I that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm excited to be sharing this with you today. I encourage you, hit the share button. Share this with your friends, co-workers, relatives. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of what they think about your faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you right here next week, same time. Until then...